In these videos, I use chemicals that can cause burns and respiratory problems. If you are to replicate any of the experiments or procedures shown in my videos, please do so in a fume hood or outside and please wear suitable gloves when handling acids. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be showing you how to make a stannous chloride test solution in the easiest way. All you need for this experiment is two ingredients. First, you will need some form of tin. Either a nice shiny block like this, or alternatively, you can use a tin solder, like this one, as long as it's almost 100% tin. The second ingredient you will need is hydrochloric acid. The one I'm using is 32%, but a dilute hydrochloric acid will be okay. I also have a small dropper bottle for storage. As you can see here, I have opted to use the solder. I've unraveled around one meter and screwed it up into a bit of a ball. I've done this to increase the surface area of the metal to increase the reaction speed. This will be way too much, and later, you will see that hardly any of it will have dissolved. I'm just setting up my hot plate now. The hot plate isn't necessary, but it does help the reaction. It doesn't need a lot of heat and it is set at the lowest setting. You don't want to boil the solution, but a little heat speeds the reaction greatly. Next, I'm adding 40 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Once added, the reaction will start immediately. If you look closely, you will see small bubbles appearing on the surface of the tin. What is happening here is that the tin ions are going into the solution and the hydrogen ions are leaving the solution. The hydrogen leaves the solution as a gas and the tin ions bond with the chloride ions to make stannous chloride. As you can see, the reaction has already begun and the hot plate hasn't gotten warm yet, but already you can see a lot of hydrogen gas being expelled from the solution. A couple of minutes later, and the reaction has really taken off. This is going to bubble away for around five to 10 minutes. As the reaction continues, it would be the perfect time to hit the like and subscribe buttons to let me know you're enjoying this video. Around five minutes later. Five minutes have gone by, and a cup of tea has been drunk, and as you can see, there aren't very many bubbles being produced. This means almost all of the hydrogen has left the solution and has been replaced by the tin. There is still a great deal of tin remaining, which will be rinsed and put into a tub ready for the next time I need to make stannous chloride. I'll transfer to another beaker and give it a test to make sure it works. I've recovered some gold from around 100 grams of low-grade pins from some printed circuit boards. This I think would be perfect to test my new stannous chloride as I know there won't be a lot of gold to detect. If it can find such a low amount of gold it means it's a good solution. There are a couple of ways to use the stannous chloride solution. My favorite is to dip a piece of filter paper into the gold bearing solution and drip the stannous chloride over it. This has the benefit of also showing if there is any other type of precious metal in the solution. If the strip turns brown, it means there is gold. If it turns green, it means there is palladium. And if it turns orange, it means the solution contains platinum. Brown it is. This solution definitely contains gold.
I'll have a quick tidy around, and then I'll show you the solution working on a spot plate. Here I have a spot plate. It used to be a watercolour mixing palette, but it does the same job. If you don't have one, you can use a white plastic spoon and get the same result. Just drop a small amount onto the spot plate and add your Stannis chloride. Don't use the same pipette for both solutions though. You do not want to contaminate your test solution. It could give false readings the next time you use it. A couple of drops and the solution turns almost black. Stannis chloride has a couple of purposes in gold recovery and refining. The first is to check to see if you have dissolved gold into a solution, and the second purpose is to test your solution after precipitating your gold to make sure that you have removed all your gold from the solution. I'm adding some sodium metabisulfite to my solution to remove the gold. Afterwards, I will repeat the test. People say that you should change your Stannis chloride solution every month or so because it spoils. My last batch made this way I actually used throughout a six month period and it worked perfectly fine. Just remember to keep it out of reach of children and mark the bottle clearly. You do not want to mistake it for your eye drops. The gold has been allowed to settle for half an hour, and another cup of tea has been drunk, so let's test to make sure we have taken all the gold out of the solution. A little dip in with a fresh piece of filter paper. And as you can see, no reaction, there is no longer any gold dissolved in the solution. Now, I am curious to see how much gold there is, so I'll allow it to settle overnight, and in the morning, I'll give it a rinse, dry it off and throw it on a scale. And there you have it, 0.3 grams of gold. It's not a lot, but it does all add up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for my next video.